Yeah, I kind of figured that before I left the house, this was going to be a bit of a problem. That the box was going to be bigger than the bag itself. But, luckily I thought ahead. I have a solution for this. Ideally one would use duct tape for this, but I don't have any duct tape, so make do with what I have. Ouch. And that's how you do it. Alright, what's going on everybody? Uh, yeah, as you can see, my uh, Atlas 2.0, which is the, uh, the Matt Ranger, the one that I picked up, finally came in after weeks and weeks of waiting and I'm gonna do a quick unboxing video to uh, show you what you're gonna get in the box if you do decide to order one of these I also picked up the uh, the, Atlas, the shockwave system that should be in here too so yeah we're gonna open it up and we're gonna find out what's inside here and what you get when you buy one of these so I'm not gonna get too in-depth as to you know what features are what the features are on the helmet and what each and every one does mainly because uh, there's a bunch of videos that are floating around on the internet I know chase on two wheels did one um, blockhead gets pretty in-depth into it and I'd kind of basically be beating a dead horse so I'm not gonna get into it plus I didn't get the first one so I can't really do a compare and contrast on them and I really didn't find out about the Ruroc helmets until I came across like guys like Chase on two wheels and Blockhead and anybody else I may not have mentioned. Let's get into it. Alright so now that I got the box open here's the shockwave system. Nice. Let's see if you can see it in the camera. Yep. There's the shockwave. Tilt the camera back a little bit. Alright so Here's the shockwave. And there's my Leatherman. Cut the tape on this. Fancy packaging, and there's a product manual, Phillips head screwdriver, some kind of USB cable, the headphones, the actual device itself. But um, we'll put this to the side and uh, install that here in a second. Now onto the helmet. Now in the box, there is a second visor, which think yeah this is a tinted visor which is great because my current helmet or old helmet I guess I should say doesn't have a tinted visor which is something I need it has like a drop shield thing which I have uh, plus pros and cons about but it does come with a tinted visor which is cool that here and it comes with this uh, some uh, do not eat I'll set it on the floor, clean it up later some more, do not eat. I'll set it on the floor, oh, product manual. Place that here. Looks like it has stickers, so I can sticker bomb more of my stuff.
this is basically what comes in the box. Product manual, second tinted visor. Let's see if you can see that in the picture. Uh, main visor. Mm -hmm. Curious about the ventilation of this thing since the visor doesn't like kind of have like that little notch there. It just goes from here to just fully shut. So I'm curious about the ventilation on this thing. This is basically it. Man, this thing is fucking light. Wow. Here's the whole chin curtain, the fidlock. These pads are really soft and squishy. Hmm. I'm gonna play around with it some more afterwards. But yeah, this is basically what comes in the box. This as well. get a uh, I guess a visor visor condom visor sleeve I don't know if I can say that I can't see that fucking goes over the top and you get a nice little helmet bag there you go so Atlas Ruroc or Ruroc Atlas 2.0 this is the matte ranger the silver accents so that's basically it to six weeks later all right this is the follow-up to the uh, unboxing of the Ruroc Atlas 2.0 now this model in particular is the uh, the Ranger so it's got the uh, the silver accents here on the matte black you know the tinted visor but um, yeah the purpose of this review is to kind of help you make an informed decision if you're looking at buying one of these helmets and upgrading from a polycarbonate helmet like I did. Now, any comparisons or views that I make are going to be based on a polycarbonate helmet because that's what I upgraded from. I can't really compare this to say a helmet like an AGV or an Arai, a Scorpion or a Shoei because I've, I've never owned any of these helmets. I've only really owned you know, lower end polycarbonate helmets because, you know, I'm not really much of a helmet connoisseur. But anyway, kind of getting off topic. Anyway, let's get on with the review. I got a, a little bit of a, a list here. So, oh, one more thing. Um, I have no sponsorship or affiliation or anything like that with Ruroc. So this helmet, I purchased this on my own. They did not provide it to me. So this review is no promotion for them or anything like that. This is just me, you know, getting it out there. I'm pretty sure there's 101 reviews of this helmet online on YouTube, but this is just me adding to the mix. All right, now I got like a list here, so bear with me. Um, first of all, it's, it's a lower profile helmet. It's made of carbon fiber as opposed to polycarbonate, so it fits smaller it fits closer to your head which gives it much better aerodynamic properties and I noticed that I didn't have the helmet pressing onto my face at high speeds you know it's um, at 80 to even a hundred plus I'm not gonna elaborate any further to that but it has a much better aerodynamic property as you can see so that's one plus, but that also has, it also comes with a downside. Um, there is a lot of wind noise with this helmet and that kind of lends to the ventilation here. These vents here on the side, you can't close these off. You could probably block them with something. I don't, you probably stuff them with wet paper towels or whatever the case may be. Those vents, you can't close those. Uh, like I was saying, there is a lot of wind noise, especially at highway speeds. So if you're not using the shockwave, and I'll get to that shortly, um, I do recommend using earplugs. Uh, another thing is that the visor does slam shut. There's only three positions, so you can't really crack it at kind of like this position to get like the ventilation because it, it won't stick in that position. So there's only three positions, which is like, 
let me get it open. There's like halfway, there's like a three quarters, and then you have fully open. And the visor just kind of slams shut, so. Which can be a little kind of unnerving sometimes. And also the slamming shut does kind of damage the finish on the helmet. Let me get out of the way of the light. But as you can see here, that's where the actual visor and there's another point here where the visor is actually making contact with the helmet. So maybe you can slip some kind of tape in there or something. And another thing I notice is that this bevel here in the visor also kind of refracts light from time to time and can even startle you or can startle the rider depending on which way he's facing. I notice that from time to time I found myself kind of checking blind spots and noticing or flipping out because there was an object there that turns out wasn't there because it was light being refracted off the visor. So, um, next item on the list is the helmet pads. The helmet pads, um, they suck. They, they kind of suck. Um, the little poppers here that hold the helmets into place and where's my uh, roll of tape that I typically use, which is not here. But anyway, kind of sandwich it here. The helmet poppers, they kind of suck. And I can literally, it's already, it's not even, it's not even in place. And I haven't used this helmet in, in like a day. And it comes apart really easily. It detaches easily. And sometimes even while you're putting the helmet on, the little poppers detach um, while donning and removing the helmet. And the material on the inside is really scratchy and it doesn't absorb sweat very well. Um, the last couple of weeks, the heat index here in, in New York has been 90 plus. So while you're sitting in stop and go traffic or you're sitting at lights, um, you, you're gonna, you've been, I've been sweating a lot. And I might take the helmet off for a minute to kind of put air in the tire or get some gas or whatever and then put it back on and next thing you know, I'm kind of drenched in my own sweat. It's pretty disgusting because it's not being whipped away and evaporated. And yeah, it's pretty disgusting. Uh, my recommendation, if anyone from Ruach comes across this video, is um, get a hold of some of that Hydra Dry stuff because with the amount of ventilation that this helmet has, combined with the wicking properties of the Hydra Dry, you know, that's a good combination there and that should do away with any uh, sweatiness or, you know, that may accumulate. Sure, Hydra Dry gets dirty real easily and has to be laundered on a constant basis, but that'll fix kind of any problems that you do with sweat kind of building up and just kind of holding in the pads where it feels like you have a wet rag on your head. And yeah, I have a shaved head, so that material just kind of feels like sandpaper on the side of my head whenever I go to pull off the helmet. Uh, the field of view is actually larger than it was on the last helmet or any polycarbonate helmet that I've worn. It's about two inches higher, or it was two finger widths higher than my last helmet, which was good because if you're in a tuck for any reason, then you can actually see above your windscreen and not worry about your helmet getting getting in the way if you're really down low. And also your peripheral is a lot wider. I didn't actually have to turn my head to see, you know, any vehicles that might be creeping up on the left or the right. You know, all I had to do was just turn my eyes and not my head to look. The shockwave. All right, now the shockwave, it's, it's upside down in the camera, so just bear with me. But um, the shockwave is another big one. <clears throat> it's about uh, 150 bucks add-on. And um, the first one that I got was actually defective. So, but pretty good. I was pretty satisfied with it. Um, good medium to highs. Um, the lows are pretty good unless they're being drowned out by something. Um, the lows were, were still pretty good. Um, on the downside, once again, due to the fact that the helmet is made of carbon fiber, the shockwave speakers do get drowned out by road noise, 
uh, wind noise and the like. So just know that if you're on the highway and you have a loud bike, you're not gonna be able to hear your music just due to the nature and the construction of this helmet. But if you're in the city and you're just rolling around at low speeds or if you're stunting a lot somewhere, you know, it's gonna work out pretty well. These speakers are actually pretty loud. Um, however, on the downside, these buttons here are actually very small. As you can see, these buttons are very small and it takes a trained gloved hand with a fair bit of practice to actually find the buttons that you want. And I don't recall seeing anything in the manual to actually show you what the different functions of these buttons do other than the volume up and volume down, there's reset and then on and off. Now, if you double tap the left, the volume up and the volume down, that's the track restart, track left, track right. And obviously on and off, you hold it and then reset button, but there's nothing in the manual to actually tell you that. So you have to kind of play around with it to figure it out. Um, so my workaround for that was already in place, which was a stem bar, which was a stem mounted quad lock. And I just turned the volume up and down on my phone and I have a touch screen on my phone. So I just tap my screen twice and get, and get the desired operation. Um, I don't know or can't recommend any really workaround for this. So yeah, that, I, I don't know what to say about that one. But yeah, this one definitely requires kind of a trained gloved hand in order to operate. Um, the range on the Shockwave is not great. It's about five to six feet. So if you walk more than five feet away from your bike, you're gonna lose a signal from this thing. Um, I don't really find that as a negative because, you know, you're not really gonna be, you're gonna be right on top of it if you're riding anyway. So, you know, I wouldn't really cite that as a negative or a positive. It's just something to make note of. Uh, that kind of segues into the next point. Um, customer service. The shockwave that I initially got out of the box was actually defective. One of the speakers was not working and the firmware was actually out of date. Now the firmware being out of date, I don't really cite that as a problem because it can be easily corrected with just plug and play download. Um, Ruach actually responded very quickly Within 24 hours, their customer service responded very quickly, offered a couple of solution, which a couple of solutions, which entailed updating the firmware and then attempting to get the speakers to work again. The speakers still did not work, and then they shipped out a brand new set, which was which I don't want to screw up my positioning of my speakers, so I won't pull them out, and I can't see them in the camera, but they sent out the newer version of their speakers and I received them in less than a week. And that's actually pretty quick given the fact that they were shipped internationally. And so, Ruach actually have top-notch customer service. So kudos to them on that and you know, keep it up. That's, I think it's great that they actually have the customer service that they have. But other than that, overall, Get this thing out of here. I can't use both hands. Overall, I'm very satisfied and very happy with this helmet. Um, if my money permits and my ZX6 stops needing repairs, um, then I'll probably buy another. So there's this one was about 420 out the door before shipping and taxes. And this is on the lower end of the spectrum. The prices are more or less dictated by the graphics. So the more complex and more visually appealing the graphics are, the more expensive the helmet is gonna be. So this one was about 420 out the door before shipping and taxes. So I highly recommend this helmet. I'm very satisfied with it and will buy more when the opportunity arises. So. If this review helped, if there's anything that I forgot or anything you think it should be added, um, comment down below and like, comment, subscribe. Thanks for watching.